From the campus of Penn State Barron, you're watching PSB TV News. And I'm Ryan Reed. We begin today with a story about a couple with a passion for helping others. Katrina and Ryan Smith are passionate about helping families who are struggling with the complications associated with premature birth. The Smiths started a nonprofit organization called Grady's Decision. PSB TV's Chelsea Magnuson has the story. This is the only picture of Grady Smith. After a premature birth with twin sister Gianna, Grady had suffered three brain hemorrhages. The parents were left with one choice, to take Grady off life support. Smith Grady at that point had suffered three brain hemorrhages at the time, massive brain bleeds, and um, it was their you know, recommendation that we would just pull um, this life support and let him go, um, which was one of many tough decisions. Um, that we faced throughout this ordeal. And uh, so um, we did. We, we pulled the life support. We uh, tried to make that as special as we could um, and uh, held him and loved him and told him everything that we wanted to say to him. And uh, we were going to miss him terribly. With the support the family received, they founded Grady's Decision as a way to give to others. Grady's Decision has helped close to 400 babies. Their organization helps families with spiritual, emotional, and financial needs. Um, so when we were in the hospital, we realized that there were families who needed help, and that help um, came from a number of different ways. Um, and so we, we believe that we were called, and our mission field was to help families in the emotional, spiritual, and financial side of things. And so uh, we, we believe our organization is a three-legged approach. Long before Ryan Smith was a grieving father, he played baseball on these fields of fair. Smith's connection to this place has now come full circle. The Barron baseball team started a fundraiser by collecting donations to cut their hair. Coach Paul Benham says they wanted to focus on raising awareness for the Smiths. Um, generally speaking, we ask our guys to, you know, kind of be neat and tidy, and um, we were just tossing around ideas and looking for a new opportunity to get involved with our community, and uh, Ryan's a friend first, as is Katrina. However, uh, he's a former assistant coach here and a former student athlete here, and uh, we just were brainstorming one day, and we thought, hey, let's try to, you know, people know and come to expect our guys to be a certain way, and then they got a little attention with their hair growing out, looking a little, <laughs> a little scraggly, and, um, it gave them an opportunity to talk to people about Grady's decision. Ryan came and met with the team and we decided in January that we'd let them grow out their hair for a couple months, shave it off, and try to fundraise. A majority of the players participated in this fundraiser. The team grew out their hair for four months. Senior Dante DeSantis says they wanted to raise money and help spread awareness for the cause. Uh, we just got involved with Grady's decision this year actually uh, with an alumni who runs it. Uh, Basically, what we did was we wanted to create awareness for everybody else, like in the community, because everybody sees us with short hair all the time. So, we I think we started in September and grew our hair out till January, and a lot of guys were looking pretty shaggy. And coach was coach was it's hard to take for him. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people were actually asking me, you know, why was I growing my hair out? It's probably the longest my hair's ever been in my life, and we just did it mainly for uh, for show, so people could catch on to what it was. The baseball team wants to make this an annual fundraiser to continue to raise awareness for Grady's decision. A year after the birth of daughter Gianna and the loss of Grady, the Smiths were blessed with their son Gunner. As pictures of Gianna and Gunner line the walls of the Smiths' home, they hope to continue to help babies one miracle at a time through Grady's decision. Reporting for PSB TV, Chelsea Magnus. To learn more about Grady's decision, log on to Grady'sDecision.com. Penn State Barron's women's swim team has a long history of success. Part of the team's recent success is because of one team member's drive to overcome the odds. Mia Petropola has overcome a, lot, a lifelong disability and has made the water her second home. Mia is deaf. Some people view her disability as a disadvantage, but she does not. 
Kay hurt her knee when she was 12. She started swimming as physical therapy. It was just a whole different world to me, basically. But then, um, you know, swimming just like, it just fit in a way. Mia became a record holder in 2013, clocking a 231 in the 200 yard breaststroke. She currently holds the third place in Barron's records for the 100 meter breaststroke. Mia dives headfirst into everything she does. She hasn't let her disability define her. Mia plans to continue swimming for Barron next year. Wow, that is truly inspiring how she can do that. Yeah, she's a great swimmer. I really have to catch one of her meets in Junker. Speaking of Junker, students and faculty have some concerns about the weight room being able to handle the number of people who want to use the facility. The fitness center on the campus at Penn State Barron contains free weights, cardio equipment, and benches. But the lack of space is a problem for students trying to get their share. Among the crowded weight room are broken machines, making it hard to find available equipment. The athletic department plans to build another facility for more equipment in the upcoming years. This change will allow for separate facilities for students and student athletes. Anyone who's been to Barrend in the last five years can see how much Barrend has grown, both in construction and in student population. More students means more housing. Construction crews are working on a new $100 million apartment complex. The Hudson Lofts are under construction a mile and a half away from Barron's campus. There are three different floor plans available to students. One bedroom, two bedrooms, and four bedrooms. Each apartment is fully furnished with stainless steel appliances, granite countertops, and washers and dryers. The complex will also include a fitness club, a cyber cafe, and a game room. Barron students are being offered with Barron students are being offered with a variety of housing options they didn't have before. Many are unsure of which option best suits them. Courtney Gerlach is the general manager at Hudson Lofts. Gerlach feels that the Lofts offer Barron students a unique opportunity. Along with some other off-campus housing, we're not just a house, we're more than that. Um, so just another option other than University Gate Apartments. We offer students one, two, and four bedroom apartments that are all inclusive, which is a brand new aspect that students aren't used to in this market. Um, they can just worry about coming to school, paying their monthly rate, or if semesterly or annually, and they don't have to worry about anything. The 178 unit building is expected to be finished by fall 2014. I'm really happy that we have so many options next year. I'll definitely have to look into that. But for some of us, we won't have to worry about these housing options because we'll be graduating. Speaking of graduation, Brianna Bailey has more on the preparation. Graduation is almost here at Penn State Barron. If you look around the campus, there are signs everywhere that point graduates on what to get to prepare for graduation. Caps and gowns are being bought as seniors hope to take the education they learned and apply it to their future jobs. Barron provides as much help as they can to future graduates. When seniors are asked what helped them the most, the answer was mostly unanimous. ACPC, they were tremendous with my resume. Andrew Waters skimmed over my resume and told me about things that I can use and different strategies that I can use in my resume to make me a standout candidate. Some students like Hannah Novotny prefer to do work on their own, but Novotny doesn't take chances when it comes to her future and asks the ACPC for assistance. Whenever they had the walk-in hours, I walked in and they helped me with my resume, laid it out, job searching, what I wanted to do. They helped me figure it out and got my resume all fixed up. Just because graduation is close doesn't mean students are slacking with their schoolwork. <laughs> students are still hard at work making sure they don't fall behind. Luckily for hardworking Barron students like myself, there are staff members like Faith Graham who take their job very seriously. Students can have both a well-rounded learning experience and a well-rounded social experience that they can care that can carry on into their lives outside of completing their college degree. At the end of the year, classrooms that were once filled will be empty and hallways will be bare. For graduating students, these last days of class will be the last times they will be here as a student. Brianna Bailey, PSB TV News. Thanks, Brianna. Well, that does it for this edition of Newsbreak. 
From all of us here at PSV TV, thanks for joining us.